The St. James, known as the crown jewel of Water Avenue, has watched every year as crowds fill the streets for the bridge crossing Jubilee. It overlooks the Alabama River near the famous Edmund Pettus Bridge and the Selma Interpretive Center. Now, many have wanted to stay in the hotel because of its rich history and location, but it hasn't been an easy road for the St. James. The future of the hotel was uncertain for so long, but now its brightest days may be yet to come. It always has been an anchor to Water Avenue. From the very beginning, this was a hotel that anchored this street. And it's our history and it's worth saving. A hotel from the past, still standing tall in modern day times, the St. James was built in 1837. It has seen nearly two centuries worth of history passing by. It can be found in library books and some of the city's oldest documents. It crowns a lofty bluff overlooking the Alabama River for many miles in both directions and commands a view of beautiful landscapes for a great distance beyond the river. With a picturesque setting, the hotel has been in less than picture perfect condition. It has been left broken, shuttered and empty. But now all that is changing. Recently, the hotel was purchased by a Birmingham-based company, Raglan Hospitality, which is a Hilton brand. It is currently undergoing construction to reopen later this year. Mayor Dario Melton says the overall reaction from the community has been excitement about the reopening of the St. James. I think it's a great thing, not just for residents here in Selma, but for those who frequent the seat of Selma tourists, uh, for example, who come, who's been looking for a place to stay outside of your traditional hotels. Everybody wants to be inside the St. James Hotel. The purchase also helped take a huge burden off the city, which took management in 2015. After a number of ups and downs, the hotel was boarded up in 2017. As I often tell people, the city shouldn't be in the hotel business, we're in the revenue business. From the beginning, it's been a long road for the St. James. It has survived wars and the changing of time. It has lived through many different administrations and natural disasters. But if walls could talk, imagine the stories it could tell. Yes, it's true. Frank and Jesse James really did stay here. We don't know what room. We, we know that they stayed. Their, their cousin was Mr. William Norris, and he served on the Selma City Council. During the Civil War, Henry Gee owned the hotel. While Mr. Gee left to fight, Former slave and self-made businessman Benjamin Sterling Turner managed the hotel. Probably one of the richest African Americans in Dallas County, even at that time, because he was a freed slave, and he also owned a livery stable and several other businesses. Thanks to Mr. Sterling, the St. James was left standing. He was running the hotel when the Yankees came in, and they did not burn here, and they stayed here as part of their headquarters, and when they left, they had burned most of Selma, but they did not burn out of honor to Benjamin Sterling Turner. So we're thankful for that. Later, he would become the first African American to be elected to serve in the U.S. Congress. Even in modern times, President Clinton and President Obama have graced the halls of the hotel, as efforts to keep the St. James alive have been going on for decades. In the mid-1990s, a committee headed by Elizabeth Driggers worked for three years to raise the money needed to renovate and reopen the hotel. Their campaign gave residents and businesses a way to add their name to history by sponsoring a brick or a room. Selma's Larry Striplin headed a private investment group with some well-known names. Charles Barkley was one of the original investors that wanted to give back to, to Selma and the Black Belt. Their efforts culminated in 1997 with a grand reopening. Visitors said the hotel rivaled places in New Orleans and even Paris. You see where we started? You can save anything if the heart's there and the people want it. However, the hotel would continue to go through years of ups and downs afterwards until the boards went up and it appeared once more that the St. James wouldn't survive. But in April of 2019, the hotel was sold to Ragland Hospitality, which would revive the hotel once more, leaving residents and those which have worked extremely hard to keep it alive Hopeful. Southern tradition, Southern hospitality, Southern architecture. There's nothing like it in a, most communities across the country because of its location, its history. New touches on a quiet, historic gym. We're still going to have an antebellum and riverfront hotel in Selma, Alabama, but we're going to be hooked to a national chain and get a lot more national exposure. Where all events, all decisions have led to this one in an effort of saving St. James. 
Much of the original architecture will remain the same. The original fireplaces and mantles are still in all of the original rooms. There will be some new additions, such as 13 more guest rooms and a grand staircase in the middle of the lobby. Like it's going to be gorgeous. Thanks, Mandy. Raglan Hospitality recently held a job fair. By the time the doors open, at least 50 new employees will welcome guests to the St. James, which is set to open later this year. Still